This morning on DC News Now, weather warnings across the DMV. Some schools already canceling class or planning early dismissals. We are helping you prepare hour by hour as heavy rain and extreme winds hit our region. Plus, former President Donald Trump back in a DC courtroom this morning to make his case for immunity. Rivera is out. After a disappointing season, team owner Josh Harris now making a change of command. We need the next leadership here because we got a lot of work to do. Finding those lost. It's a nightmare to have a missing person. How one man is working to make sure families of missing people find answers. A local player, now a national champion. How Blake Corum helped the Wolverines finish their undefeated season with the national title. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. All right, time right now is six o'clock on a Tuesday morning. Starting off with this look, you can see the radar right there on your screen. We are showing the potential for flooding along the uh, area. I mean, it's going to be a messy day. Jackie's got all that info coming up, and that is a live look at the Kennedy Center. But we do want to say good morning, and thanks for starting your day with us. I'm Tania Wright. Yeah, good morning to you. I'm Corey James. We're tracking what you need to know ahead of those storms. We have team coverage, too, all morning long. Liberty Zavala is out in Prince George's County, as well as Shanika. She's tracking your commute in studio this morning. But let's start off with meteorologist Jackie Lair, who is going to help folks get prepared and help them know what they can expect today. Jackie, good morning. Yeah, good morning. It looks like the leading edge of some of that precipitation has moved its way into some of our west Western areas. We're talking over towards Western Maryland, parts of West Virginia, and even over towards the I-81 corridor in Virginia. That low is back over towards Missouri. But then we have this expansive system ranging from that snow off towards the north and then severe weather well down along uh, the, the Gulf states uh, across that way. But back here locally, zooming on in, we do have some of that precipitation back out towards the west. Right now, D.C. is dry. Much of northern Virginia is dry and starting to notice at least the leading edge of maybe a little bit of that snow starting to push its way closer towards Hagerstown. So we're looking at some morning snow and mix mainly for the mountains region. Could see a little bit of that wintry mix and a little bit of that snow to start at least closer towards Hagerstown before eventually it changes over all to rain and that rain will be heavy at times could see those totals up to three inches. Coastal flooding that will be an issue especially around high tide for our coastal communities and some strong wind gusts talking nearing at right around 50 miles per hour later on today of uh, more details and that timing coming up as Shanika here with the on and look at those roadways. How's it looking out there on this Tuesday morning? OK, let's head out to Northern Virginia at the top of the six o'clock hour. You're looking good along 95 heading north and southbound. This is right in Springfield. This does get a little bit tricky, so uh, do brace yourselves for later. 66 east and west is looking good. Off of 66, though, right in Manassas, right near Ballsford Road and Sudley Manor. You got a crash right on Ashton. So just watch for that. Other than that, you are looking good to go. Shanika, thank you. Happening now, storm preparations are underway as another round of rain is expected to hit the DMV. Today's storm is expected to have heavy rain and extreme winds. Our Liberty Zabala live in Brandywine this morning with a look at how people there are staying safe. Liberty, good morning. Good morning tonight and Corey. Well, the Prince George's County Department of Public Works and Transportation will be handing out free sandbags for residents here who are vulnerable to flooding. In Prince George's County, the DPWNT office is giving out free sandbags from now until Thursday in preparation for heavy rain showers expected this week. Residents can stop by three pickup locations, including its Brandy Wine facility, its Amondale facility, and its Darcy Road maintenance facility from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Residents can pick up anywhere from 5 to 15 sandbags to protect their homes and properties from flooding. Now, the city of Annapolis is also handing out free sandbags to residents and businesses. The National Weather Service warns flood waters can present many dangers. Flood waters may contain sewage or chemicals. If your home is likely to flood, don't wait for evacuation orders. Get out. Residents tell DC News Now how they're preparing. Since I live in Virginia and I work in Maryland, I'm probably going to have to get up a little earlier, um, especially since um, traveling out this way kind of takes me you know a little over an hour so I'll probably have to leave probably an hour and a half 
So give yourself that extra time and they're also reminding residents to not enter any flood damaged homes or properties until they're given the all clear by authorities. For now, live here in Brandywine, Liberty Zabala, DC News Now. Thank you, Liberty. Well, many schools closing or operating under early dismissal schedules today because of that weather. Right now, Culpeper County Public Schools and Spotsylvania County Public Schools are the only two districts in our area shutting down for the day. Meantime, multiple districts have announced they will be closing school early today. This includes Fauquier County Public Schools, Anne Arundel County Public Schools, Stafford County Public Schools, Fredericksburg City Public Schools, and Howard County Public Schools. You can, of course, stay up to date on the storm and the potential flooding around the clock with our DC News Now weather app. Just scan the QR code. You can see it right there on your screen to download it. Tom, right now with 604, police in Fairfax County arrested a group of people accused of stealing more than $4,500 worth of designer handbags from Bloomingdale's in McLean. Through collaboration with the Virginia State Police, they arrested all four suspects on I-495 in Annandale. Authorities say all stolen merchandise was returned to the store. A driver is in custody this morning after allegedly crashing an SUV into a gate at the White House. Secret Service made the arrest just before 6 o'clock last night. The agency did not say whether they believe it was intentional. Some roads, though, around the White House were closed to traffic after the crash. According to the president's schedule, Biden was in Dallas and not at the White House at the time of the crash. And a D.C. judge overseeing former President Trump's federal election case was targeted on Sunday night. Police say a fake emergency was called into U.S. District Judge Tanya Chutkin's address in D.C. They responded at about 10 o'clock for a report of a shooting. No shooting happened, but we are told she has received several threats since she was assigned this case last year. And happening today, former President Donald Trump expected to be in D.C. According to the U.S. Court of Appeals, this is for oral arguments in his case. It involves his claims of presidential immunity from criminal prosecution regarding a case over the January 6th insurrection. That case involves a four-count indictment filed by special counsel Jack Smith alleging that Trump plotted to overturn the results of the 2020 election. DC News Now is your local election headquarters, and today voters in Alexandria will be able to select a new school board member. Now, this is a special election for District A. This all comes after a school board member resigned back in November. The two candidates running for the position are Gina Baum and Tim Beatty. The winning candidates will serve until the end of the year. Polls are open from 6 a.m. until 7 p.m. And if you're voting by mail, your ballot must be postmarked by 7 o'clock tonight. Virginia lawmakers are planning to discuss legislation on building that new sports arena and entertainment district in Alexandria. This is part of Governor Glenn Youngkin's plan to move the Washington Capitals and Washington Wizards from D.C. to Virginia. Now, the proposal would create a public entity to help finance the project. The bill is expected to be one of the most high-profile issues during this year's legislative session. Supporters of the bill say it is a good idea for the future of Virginia. Meantime, critics are calling it a giveaway for the wealthy. Lawmakers will meet tomorrow for the first day of the session. And tomorrow, the D.C. Council is holding an oversight roundtable on the future of the Capital One Arena. This all comes as Monumental Sports announced its plans to move the Capitals and the Wizards out of the arena in 2028. And the meeting will also cover options to redevelop the area if the team leaves. Your time right now is 6.07 this morning. Going to the grocery store in Virginia could soon be cheaper. Republican Senator David Suterline introduced a bill to eliminate 1% sales tax on certain food and hygiene products. Bread, milk, and eggs are among the foods included. According to the Department of Agriculture, cutting the tax would save a Virginia family of four $14 a month. That is $168 a year. However, Democrats say getting rid of the tax would take away money from public schools. In, the, in Virginia, the tolls on the Dulles Greenway could significantly increase. Today is your chance to speak on the matter. The hike raises tolls from $5.80 to a proposed maximum $8.10. That would be during rush hour. The Corporation Commission is holding a public hearing tonight at Freedom High School from 6 to 10. If you want to speak there, you do have to sign up ahead of time. You can find details on our website, dcnewsnow.com. The IRS announcing January 29th as the official start date of the tax season. The agency is in the middle of a massive overhaul with the goal of improving technology and customer service. New this year, the agency says more walk-in centers will be open to help taxpayers. The deadline to file is April 29th.
Well, the Washington Commanders ushering in a new chapter of football in the district. The team fired head coach Ron Rivera yesterday after they won just four games this season. But the head coach, not the only major vacancy in the commander's uh, office. Majority owner Josh Harris announced yesterday afternoon that the franchise is going to be looking for a new head of football operations as well. Meantime, fans say they're not surprised to see Rivera go after failing to produce winning seasons each of the last four years. Anybody who looked at their record could not really expect um, a rational person or a rational businessman to continue um, a record that hasn't really delivered. NFL is a business. And if you don't win, it's kind of hard to sell seats and make money. Despite the poor performance, the last few years, players had nothing but nice, nice things to say about their former coach. Everybody in this building, you know, loves Ron Rivera. Six of my seven years, I've been my coach. So I'm forever grateful for everything that he's done, you know, for me and definitely for this team. Um, I feel like we came a long way from what it used to be here. The commanders have already re requested interviews with a number of coaching candidates. Those include Ben Johnson and Aaron Glenn with the Lions, Raheem Morris of the Rams, who is a former defensive backs coach for Washington. They would also like to interview Mike McDonald and Anthony Weaver from the Ravens. All right, 6